Hey, welcome back to Husky Stadium here at Northern Illinois University for the Class 2A State Championship game. I'm Donnie Tillman, and it should be an exciting game between the 10-3 Auburn Trojans and the 13-0 Downs Tri-Valley Vikings. These teams have fought their way to the Cow, and now they'll settle up for a Class 2A State Championship on the field. We talked about the Auburn Trojans and their story and how they got here one and three to start the season, but then things really turned around and Auburn really got it rolling. Just three turnovers by the Trojans after week four of the regular season. As for Tri-Valley, they've been perfect so far. We know their record. We'll see if they can complete that destiny and go 14-0 and claim that 2A state championship. With that said, I'll send it to the guys who will call today's game between Auburn and Tri-Valley. That'll be Lee Hall and Jack McInerney. All right, Donnie, thank you very much. And uh, we saw a couple of undefeated teams in game one, Jack. Here we see the top-ranked team in the state, undefeated Tri-Valley, taking on a team in Auburn that comes in unranked for the state championship. Well, game. you know, they stumbled early. Right. They were one and three in the beginning, then they've won nine straight. A lot of parts came together. Great, great chemistry brought them here today, and I think they're going to give us a real good show this afternoon. Here's a look at the brackets and how they got here. D Mac falling to Tri Valley in the quarterfinals, and it was Tri Valley over Anawan Weathersfield in the snow, 20 to 12. Auburn beating Pena and then beating Nashville last week, 22 to 6, as they advanced to the state championship game. So it's nine and three, unranked Auburn taking on unbeaten Tri-Valley, the number one team in the state, as they try to finish off a perfect year. They were here two years ago and finished second to Lena Winslow. They will try to cap off an undefeated season and a state championship coming up here today. We will have more, including the kickoff of our 2A state championship coming up from DeKalb on Comcast Sportsnet. Just moments away from the kickoff of our 2A state championship game here on the campus of Northern Illinois University, Auburn against Tri Valley. We'll have that start for you coming up next on Comcast Sportsnet. Two A state championship football coming your way from Northern Illinois University here in DeKalb. Lee Hall, Jack McInerney, Donnie Tillman on hand as Auburn takes on Tri Valley for the state championship. Take a look at Auburn just south of Springfield in Sangamon County. Enrollment of 394. They play out of the Sangamo Conference. Dave Bates is the athletic director and head coach in his 30th year with the Auburn Trojans making his first trip to state after several near misses in the semifinals. Downs just outside Bloomington. Tri-Valley in McLean County, 325 their enrollment. The heart of Illinois Conference. And what a year that conference had, sending four teams to the state quarterfinals in classes 1A and 2A. Brian Knudsen, the athletic director, Moser Benderdis, the gentleman in charge there at Tri Valley. They were here two years ago and finished second to Lena Winslow. There are three players back who started in that game for Tri Valley, and they have been very motivated by that second place finish. Not only that, they lost in the first round of the playoffs last year to Moroa Forsyth. And Josh Root kind of thought then that whoever won that game would end up on the turf, and it was Moroa Forsyth. They made it to the state championship game, finishing second a year ago in Class 2A. So the Vikings players very motivated by what happened here two years ago and by what happened last year. And don't you think the Trojans are motivated from Auburn right now, starting out the season at 1-3, and three, and now all of a sudden they're playing for the state championship game after a nine, nine straight uh, winning games here. So... They're a team psychologically that says most people probably didn't think we should be here, but we are, so we're going to show people why we deserve to be here. Well, that's an amazing thing, and Dave Bates believed in this team even when they were 1-3. and three. They were putting up amazing numbers offensively even then. Peyton Weiss will kick it off with the wind at his back, and is Tri-Valley with the return. 
And taking it out to the 35 yard line is Brock Danko, senior running back for Tri Valley. And that's where the Vikings will start 13 and 0. Again, they were second in 13. And as co op with Leroy, won state championships in 96 and second in 2001. In fact, Josh Rue played for Leroy as part of that co op, and his brother, the head coach's brother, won a state championship with well, Leroy. There's a look at Peyton Roop's numbers. Uh, he will primarily stay on the ground in this option offense. Well, it's called a flex bone. It's much like you see with Georgia Tech and Air Force and a lot of the military academies. Very tough def or offense to stop. Danko with the carry on first down. Pickup of about nine for Brock Danko. And there you get a look at the starters. Peyton Roop has been starting quarterback since he was a sophomore. Started in that 2013 championship game. Steiner, Danko, and Long, the running backs, Kinsella as well. Merritt, Smith, Elam, Lakey, Elam, and Sorensen. The guys up front, the guys who really make this offense run for Tri County. Second and one. Good job, and Jake of Steiner. Not much room there. He's coming off a big 162 yard performance against Anawan Weathersfield. And there's the starters on defense for the Trojans Sam Canaday, Jake Roth, a big guy coming back from a broken hand for them. Graham Beard, McDonald, Landers, Patterson, Minch. Grim Johnson and Drew points. They're going to have their hands full because Tri Valley averages 407 yards of rushing offense per game. On first and ten, the give is to Hayden Long. 5'8, 180 pound senior. Just getting back to that, that stack very quickly for, for Tri Valley. They average 407 yards rushing out of this uh, flex bone. They only throw for 58 a game, so that's 465 yards of total offense and 47 points per game. Very, very effective offense. Second and four. Peyton Roop under center. The give is to Long, and look at him drag the tackler down inside the 40 yard line and a first down for Hayden Long, 1,424 yards coming into this ball game, a pickup of eight there. Well, anytime you're gonna run an offense like this, you're telling the defense, you can gang up on us because we don't throw the ball very often. So we're telling you, you're gonna put a lot of guys in the box which in, within five yards of the line of scrimmage, but it's the offensive line that really makes this offense go. Got a good look at Josh Roop there, head coach of Tri-Valley. Here's Long again. Good gain on first down of about five. Roop in his ninth year, as you saw there, 60 and 25. Graduated from Tri Valley High School in 1991, but played for Leroy as a member of that co op. Opening moments 2A state championship game. Lee Hall, Jack McInerney, Donnie Tillman with you. Roop calls his own number and gets kind of twisted around and it'll be close to a first down for the senior quarterback Peyton Roop. Now the reason he did that it wasn't it was a short yardage situation it was more the fact that the defense gave him they were over shifted to one side there was nobody over the center because they wanted to stop the off tackle play with the fullback that gave the quarterback the opportunity to run a quarterback sneak. Sidney Landers might get two points in wrestling for that takedown but Peyton Roop gets a first down for Tri Valley. He keeps it, fakes that hand off the long, and he's got first down yardage and more as he keeps driving inside the 15-yard line. Again, a very effective offense if the fullback is doing his job up inside. You give him the fake inside, pulls the linebackers down, and it's like a belly where the quarterback comes back, fakes the second man, and follows him. You see the fake? Now he's following the lead blocker, number 22, up inside. Very effective well-balanced offense keeps you on your toes from left to right. 13-yard pickup for Peyton Roop. First and 10 from the 14. Danko in motion, gets the handoff. He's inside the 10 to the 5, now to the 3. Brock Danko, the 5'9", 175-pound senior. He's got 1,077 yards rushing coming into the game. Three Vikings rushers over 1,000 yards this year. Roop, Danko, and Long. This time it was Danko. Quick hitter here. 
Roop keeps it, takes it down to about the two. Peyton Roop, 1,297 yards rushing. He has a, a shot at becoming Tri-Valley's all-time leading rusher with a big day today. He is 136 yards behind the all-time leader, Caleb Wilson, who was a running back on that 2013 runner-up team. Well, the way this first drive is going, he's going to have a good shot at that record. Second and goal from the two. Opening drive for the Vikings and movement. Movement on the line for Tri-Valley. Alex Smith flinched. And that'll push him back a little bit. The ball fall. Full start on the offense, number 71. Those, are the, those are the penalties that uh, really give coaches gray hairs right there. Michael Zuckerman, Thomas Kaplan, Thomas Lowe, Darren Schrag Jr., Kevin Lindell are officials here in today's state championship game. Four minutes gone in the first quarter. Tri-Valley on the move here. Here's the give to Steiner, looking for the corner, and he's in for the touchdown. Jake Steiner with the seven-yard touchdown run, and Tri-Valley is on the board. Well, everything starts out with the fake to the fullback, and anything off of that can be counters, bellies, whatever you want. But you'll see the, the initial fake, and he comes right off the edge. It's almost like a jet sweep. He's coming out of the wingback wing back spot, but just showing good speed out on the edge. Jake Steiner, 5'10", 160-pound junior. He wins the race to the pylon, and the Vikings take the early lead. Jake Ward for the point after. His holder is Jake Steiner. And Jake Ward makes it a 7-0 Tri-Valley lead. The Vikings march down the field, and Jake Steiner makes it a 7-0 game. Back on the campus of Northern Illinois University, Tri-Valley takes the opening kickoff, marches down the field, and they've got a 7-0 lead. Very impressive drive off of the... Uh, Flex bone showing a lot of counter, a lot of balance, keeping you off balance the entire time all the way down the field. Excellent versatility, but that's what they've done all year long. You know, in scoring their uh, their way here, they've averaged 47 points a game off of that, and not throwing too much. So that tells you how effective that ground game is. Pop up kick there for Tri Valley, and good coverage by the Vikings on the special teams. Jake Ward in there to make the tackle. And you get a look, our first look at Drew Chance, the starting quarterback for Auburn, six foot one, 200 pound senior. Averages 171 yards a game throwing, 2,200 yards passing, 800 yards rushing for Drew Chance. And his running buddy is Drew Points. Looks to throw on the first play of the first offensive play of the game the intended receiver was Drew points and he kind of gave up on that one there's a look at the Auburn starters on offense Drew Chance Ryan McLaughlin is the key running back for Auburn Johnson points Mitch and Eaker their wide receivers up front it's Heron Roth Anthony Alexander Landers and Baptist this entire weekend is almost entirely focused on quarterbacks with all the eight games that we'll be having because all the teams have outstanding quarterbacks. And it's Chance taking it out near midfield before he's finally dragged down by Brock Danko. Pick up a 14 for Drew Chance. Well, here's a quarterback at 200 pounds. That's just a straight power play right off left tackle. Nothing fancy. And uh, there's nothing frail about him on that particular run right there. You can see that all afternoon. You can see that all weekend by all the teams that we have down here. Chance will keep it again. He's popped right there at the line of scrimmage by Tom Kinsella, six foot, 180 pound senior linebacker. There's a look at the defense for Tri-Valley. Hunter Merritt, Jared Nelson, Matt Sorensen, their big guy, All-Stater on the line. Cameron Elam, Foster Lakey, Long, Dolan, Kinsella, who we just saw make that stop. Peyton Root plays both sides of the ball. Chance 
Nowhere to go, and he's finally dragged down after a loss of about three. Matt Sorensen, the All-Stater we just mentioned, big number 55 in there on the stop. He's a 6'2", 260-pound senior, and he did not let Drew Chance out of his sights. You can see good, good backside pursuit right there. When he initially rolled to his right, coverage was taken away right there, and good, uh, good coverage downfield right there, and that's forced that scramble. Third and 12. Chance has to run with it and nowhere to go. Short of the line of scrimmage originally and brought down by Hunter Merritt, number 33. Usually in a game like this, when you're, when you're putting in your defensive game plan, because you do have an offensive game plan and a defensive game plan, when you have a quarterback like this, you tell your linebackers, Let's not drop too quickly because of his great running ability. And that's a perfect example right there. The linebacker stayed at home initially to, to cut off that quarterback draw. And that's what you're going to see throughout most of the ball game. Those linebackers are going to be keen on the quarterback. Aiden Long was also in on the stop. Drew Points does a nice job of catching that one bounce snap. And that ball couldn't tell if it hit a Tri Valley player or an Auburn player. Luckily for Tri Valley, they came up with the ball. Very, very fortunate turn of events right there because he doesn't do a very good job of handling the football right here. He tries to make a great catch, takes his eye off the football, as you can see. You want to try and catch any kind of a punt above the waist. You don't want to have to go for any kind of a kickoff or a punt on the run below the waist because that's when you're going to turn it over. I thought it actually bounced off. One of the two players blocking, but he actually did try to make the catch there. Peyton Roop will start from his own 16 yard line and a flag and movement for Tri Valley. Both wings went in motion at the same time, so some miscommunication right there. False start on the offense, number 21, five yard penalty. These are tough. The, the uh, flex bone is a, is a tough. Offense to defend. What you what you normally want to do is say is keep everything between the tackles. Let all that motion go on between the tackles and react to it after. Don't react to it before. Peyton Roof hangs onto the ball but doesn't have anywhere to go. Great job of shutting down that time by the defensive line of Auburn. Peyton Roof is really good at sticking that ball in the belly and taking it out at the very last second. He almost didn't get it out that time. Well, that's the whole key to the flex bone is to be able to do that. And what I meant before on don't react to the motion too quickly is that if you start sliding the moment you see uh, motion, that's going to take you out of your gap as far as linebackers are concerned. You wait until the play develops outside the tackle. Stay home while it's inside. Jake Roth blew that play up. Here's Danko. He takes it out to about the 20 yard line. Pickup of eight for Brock Danko. When you have versatility like this, when you have an outstanding quarterback, the keys to this are you can have relatively average halfbacks, but the fullback is the one that's really got to be the guy that's tough inside. And then the other the running backs can go off of those counters and make up nice yards. But the quarterback and the fullback in this case are the key to this offense. Third and eight. Ooh, keeps it himself. Tries to bounce it outside and won't get there. It's tough to run that option on the short side of the field because obviously you could see that he wanted to pitch it almost, but he ran out of field down there because the, the pitch man was almost into the boundary. He's looking to pitch right here, but he's got nowhere to go with it. So a smart move on his part to not force a turnover down here. And again, he rides him. He wanted to pitch right there. Any kind of a wishbone or, or flex bone, there's always discipline by the defense to make it work. Somebody's got the dive, somebody's got the quarterback, somebody's got the pitch man. Evan Smith to punt into the wind for Tri Valley. And over ender. Fielded near midfield by Caden Mitch. And no gain. The tackle by Jake Steiner of Tri Valley. We're headed to break. 7 0 Tri Valley. 
Seven nothing our score. Tri Valley leading Auburn here in our 2A state championship game. Auburn will try and even things up here on their second possession. They begin at their own 48 yard line. Ryan McLaughlin with the carry and met in the backfield and thrown to the ground by the Tri Valley. Matt Sorensen, Cam Elam. That was Cam Elam that time. Just a good job right there of negating the offensive line and not allowing them to get off the ball at all. Just stalemating a line of scrimmage, and that's how you can stop this a strong running game is control the line of scrimmage. Second and 13. Straighter, nowhere to, or chance rather, nowhere to go. Matt Sorensen, the tackle. He's one of those three year starters for Tri Valley. Well, when you have veterans like that, they really can contribute an awful lot psychologically to the other members of that defense with their encouragement throughout the game. Third and 13. Chance looking to throw. Almost picked off. Jake Steiner on the coverage. He got his both hands on it, actually. Not just one hand, both hands on it. Breaks it up, and that'll bring up fourth down. Now, there's a perfect example of good scouting because they've seen this play when he goes with the half roll and then the throwback. Great move right there. And of course, that pick would have resulted in six had he been able to hand down to the football. Just good reaction right here. Good job of breaking it up by Jake Steiner. Drew points, his second punt of the game. Good bounce. And we saw that in the 1A championship game. Arcola able to down it inside the one yard line. Auburn gets it down at the four yard line. So special teams play punting on this artificial surface with the wind at your back and you get that hop and it can be quite a weapon. That's why usually coaches always want to make sure that the guy they have back to catch punts is a possession receiver, not necessarily a guy that can break it all the time, but somebody that you can count on to catch the football back there so it doesn't get that turf roll. It's a little different than what most of these teams are used to seeing on Friday nights. They don't have that turf roll. Steiner fumbles as he, well that's Danko, fumbles as he hits the ground. There's a flag on the play. And it'll be against Tri Valley. It was a good initial job on that run of just following his blockers. He didn't break away too soon. He tried to stay right in behind them, let them make their block, and then cut off it. But uh, that play Holy will be coming back. Offense number 33, half the distance for the goal line. first time. Unfinished business. That has been the motto for Tri Valley this year. They lost that title game a couple of years ago. If you remember, they fumbled twice to Lena Winslow's best player. They don't take anything away from Lena Winslow, but then again, they kind of feel like they let one get away a couple of years ago. So that has been a, a motto, a motivator for Tri Valley as they return to the state championship game. Pick up of three, it'll bring up second down. Under two minutes to go now, first quarter. Well, we've got eight games this weekend. How many returning state champions do we have? Zero. No, Nazareth is one. I don't know that. I think uh, <laughs> I shouldn't ask that question. <laughs> Roop keeps it himself, and he's got a first down out to the 20 yard line. Montini's won state championships in the past. Well, they're back for the seventh time. No, they're not a defending state champ. They've lost the last two times that they've been here. But Nazareth uh, is the only. I should have knew the answer to this question before I asked it. <laughs> but as far as I know, Nazareth is the only returning state champion that we have right now to be defending the title. First and ten for Tri Valley. Up seven nothing here. Roop with a rare throw. Pick up of a couple. That's just his sixth throw in the postseason. He was three of five in the playoffs before that throw. 
didn't yep. get much there at second and seven. I'm always surprised when teams are throwing in the wind mm -hmm. in situations like this as far as in their own territory. I can see a little more of your in midfield, but somewhat dangerous in an early part of the game like this. That's what we're talking about with that tough inside That's fullback. He's got to be the guy that gets that tough yardage inside. And he averages over nine yards a carry, which is amazing when you're looking at a 13 game schedule coming into here in his 14th game he's playing. But a lot of those games, he's only carried the ball on an average of 11 times because a lot of those games were running clocks, so they were out of the ball game by the by the fourth and sometimes third quarter. Time winding down here, first quarter. Roop keeps it himself. He's hit there, shakes a tackler down the sideline across midfield, loses it out of bounds at the 46-yard line with 11 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Now, one unique part of the uh, flex bone is you'll see how very close the fullback is to the quarterback in the lineup. He gets right up in behind him. Good job right here by Peyton Roop getting outside. That's why he's an all-stater. He's been a three-year starter. He knows how to run this offense. Pickup of 22 for Peyton Roop. Hayden Long with that last carry has now broken the single season rushing record for Tri-Valley. So the career rushing record is on the line here today. The single season rushing record broken. Braden Herman set that just last year and Hayden Long has broken it here. As he adds to his 1424 yard total coming into this game. But the coaches are real happy with the formation of the call. Well that's Josh Roop and his son the quarterback Peyton Roop. And uh, an interesting dynamic. Peyton, as a sophomore, it was pretty much dad calls this, and this is what we do. And the dynamics changed a little bit now. Peyton is a real film nut, watches a couple of hours of film a day. He's got his ideas about what should happen. And uh, he says, dad gives me a little more leeway, but dad's still boss. I was going <laughs> to say the key term there is a little. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have to have confidence in your quarterback. And in many cases, they don't really audible a lot of plays here. In many cases, it could be just the fullback dive is the direction off the flex bone. There's not a lot, a lot of audibles as far as throwing the football or anything else. And it depends, again, on the sophistication. But usually it's a fullback dive or a belly with the quarterback. There's only about four plays that they can audible to. First and 10 from the 46. Keeps it himself. Shakes another tackle. Boy, he just keeps running, doesn't he? And what's amazing about how he runs out of that, he's only 5'6", 155 pounds. But again, he's a tough, tough young man. He's very quick feet. Caden Minch had hands on him but couldn't bring him down. And Tri-Valley takes a lead to break. Second quarter up next. Country Financial will help you build a plan with insurance and financial solutions to help you get where you want to go. Call your local rep at 1-866-COUNTRY or visit countryfinancial.com. Lee Hall, Jack McInerney, and Donnie Tillman down on the field. 7-0 our score as we get ready to start the second quarter action here. Tri-Valley driving the ball with the lead. Peyton Root keeps it himself. Inside the 30 to the 20. He's in race to the uh, end zone and is brought down from behind. Drew points finally drags him down at the five yard line. A pickup of 35 by the senior quarterback, Peyton Roop. Well, that's what happens when you have a three year starter. He can make the read on that. Rides the fullback. If they close too fast, take a look. He rides the fullback, they close, and he just bounces it right outside, and he shows you the quickness right there in the open field that has led to his 20, 2,200 yards of, uh, excuse me, 1,200 yards of uh, running offense. Brock Danko met with resistance at the five yard line with nowhere to go. Josh Roop says Peyton, his quarterback and son, is a pure leader. We have seen him mature and grow the last couple of years as he now leads his team as a senior back to state, trying to 
do what they couldn't do two years ago, and that's win a state championship. They lead here seven nothing, second and goal from the six. This is a tough offense to stop right here in the red zone. Group looks to throw. Now tucks Ooh. it, carries it, takes it down to the three, and a big hit there. And slow to get up for Auburn is Colton McDaniel. Well, he got it turned from a pass to a run, and that's why he got nailed so hard, because by the time he realized running, he went to turn. He got a crack back block. You can see the, the pass look here. And right here, he turns right into that incredible block right there and a very, very uh, clean block. Nothing cheap by that block at all. Tom Pinsella rattling the molars right there. Third and goal. Gives to Wong. And he is in for the score. Hayden Wong with his 20th touchdown carry of the year. And it's a 13-0 lead, Tri-Valley. And that's exactly why that particular offense is so effective in the red zone. The court, the fullback is so close. And you can see how quickly he hits right there. Just a good job by the offensive line on a little full block with the center blocks back and the guard comes around and Foster Lake and Ben Elam. Nice job right there by the center and the guard. The kick for Jake Ward is up and good and it's a 14-0 Tri-Valley lead. Aiden Long taking the short way to the end zone. It's a two touchdown lead for Tri-Valley. We'll be back here on Comcast Sportsnet. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. Monday night, the Bulls return to the UC as they meet the Spurs for the first time this season. Coverage starts at 6.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Right now, we've got high school football. Tri-Valley from Downs just outside Bloomington with a 14-0 lead over Auburn here in the opening moments of the second quarter. Jake Ward boots it away. Good stick there on special teams for Jared Nelson. 5'9 junior for Tri-Valley. He's a key defender for the Vikings as well. Well, we're going to get an opportunity here to see a very effective flex bone offense as far as when they run the ball down the field. There's a good look at their scoring drive, and it was done with great balance. The fullback, quarterback, and tailback showing a great balance, making it tough to defend. Chance back to throw right through the hands of Colby Bossman, the 6 1 sophomore. That's a catch that's so very important to make right now because Auburn has to get back in this ball game, especially going into the win right here in the second quarter. As effective as Tri Valley has been with that run game, they got Auburn's got to keep the football away from them. Chance keeps it himself. He's got a pickup of about three. His number one receiver is number five, Drew Points. But uh, he is a guy that teams have keyed on and kind of taken away after scoring six touchdowns in the first two rounds. Drew Points has no points in the last two weeks, hasn't made it into the end zone. And Chance has not thrown a pass yet to Drew Points. And what's interesting, he comes into the ballgame with 95 catches, which is an incredible total for 14, over 1,400 yards. 
He's the intended receiver here, and it's thrown over his head and out of bounds. Well, in many cases, there's several ways of, of uh, double teaming your top receiver. You can do it with a cornerback and a safety. You can do it with a corner and a linebacker. You can drop off an outside linebacker. You can go to a nickel defense, which means it, you take away a defensive lineman. You bring in another defensive back so you can double up. All kinds of different ways to do it. But that creates a challenge for your defense when you have to do that. Peyton Root back to receive the pump by Drew Poison. That that's going to bounce backwards. He's going to stop it right there. That might be uh, negative yards. Zero total, some total on that punt. And uh, as Drew Points hangs his head, but into that wind, it's those things can happen. And part of that too, though, is psychological because you know that you're punting in a wind. So sometimes it changes your mechanics and how you want to kick it. And of course, the conditions as far as the you know the, the temperature and that type of thing uh, magnitude it a little bit or magnify it, excuse me. So this gives the Vikings a very short field. They'll start at the Auburn 25 yard line up 14 to nothing. Dead ball, Dead ball. substitution <laughs> violation on the defense. Five yard penalty. Again. Ty Valley doesn't need any help getting yardage. And they just got a free five right there. So the end zone gets a little closer for Tri Valley. And so far, Auburn has been unable to stop the rushing attack of the Vikings. Here's Rue. Bounces it outside and gets taken down. A nice open field stop there by Evan Grimm, 5'8 junior. Takes down Peyton Rue. Well, you can see how tight the fullback is, and you'll see the guard pulling right there, number 58. Gets out in front of him, Cameron Elam. And that's part of the design. You run the fullback in on one side, and what he basically does is he fills for the pulling guard. He picks off the guy that would be following the guard, and then the guard leads the quarterback up around the corner. Pick up a five for Rue, who would have been a lot more if not for that tackle. A nifty tackle in the open field. Here's Danko inside the 10. Skips, hops into the end zone for the touchdown. Brock Danko. 15 yard touchdown run. Good balance right there. Running the fullback, quarterback, and then they run right here. Right off of the uh, dive fake, they run the jet sweep. Good job out there blocking Jake Steiner, helping out to get him around the corner. Here's the handoff. All he does right here when you run a jet sweep is you basically get a head start of beating the defensive linemen and the linebackers to the edge. He did a nice job of waiting for that block, too, because he was not running at full speed. He waited for that block to develop. And the kick is good. And Tri Valley has three touchdowns, three different running backs. Dango, Long, and Steiner have all scored for Tri Valley. And they lead it here 21 nothing. Pretty impressive performance to this point for the Vikings. Well, you know, I mentioned earlier their, their rushing offense. They average over 400 yards a game rushing the football. They'll throw it once in a while for only 58 yards. But those are key first down 58 yards for 465 yards a game. But the other part of that is 47 points a game. The Vikings, if you'd seen the video from their semifinal game, and there were sloppy conditions all over the state, but I don't, Peyton Root said, I'd never been that cold in my life. That was a semifinal win over Anawan Weathersfield as you get a look at his dad, Josh Root. Uh, they proved themselves to be pretty sturdy in the mud on last Saturday, and here they are on the turf, and they are running wild so far, a 21 0 here. There's still plenty of time here in the second quarter for Auburn to. Yeah, that ball flew off the uh, tee before uh, Jake Ward got to it, so he'll get another shot at it here. Well, their offense has been everything that we thought and heard it would be. Just a very, very difficult offense to defend with the balance that he's had. We'll watch right here, just there is ball. In many cases, somebody might think, well, that's an onside kick. No, it wasn't. Somebody 
holding the ball. Yep. So now this actually limits the coverage downfield. You're going to be covering with nine defenders going down there because the holder obviously is going to be a little slow in covering, and then the punter usually is this, or the kicker usually is the safety to help if there's a breakaway run. Holding it didn't help much. Little pop up kick there is fielded, and Sidney Landers comes up with it, but he's taken down almost as soon as he catches it. And Auburn will take over at the 37 yard line as they look to get into the end zone for the first time here today. I think what they've got to do here is they got to get Drew McLaughlin in the ball game. It's really been Drew Chance thus far doing most of the work, which is the quarterback. They need to get number 11 right there, Ryan McLaughlin. He's contributed uh, 1,400 yards of offense this year, but he uh, so far hasn't done very much. They haven't called on him. Drew Chance, Ryan McLaughlin at his side. Chance will throw it down the middle. Intended receiver was Ben Johnson, who had 30 catches coming into today. That's incomplete. Let's go downstairs to Donnie. All right, thanks, Lee. You know, Jack just hit it right on the head right there. You know, it's all Drew Chance so far for Auburn. And you can kind of sense that the frustration is uh, setting in with the offense. And head coach Dave Bates has been talking with this team, talking with this quarterback and saying, hey, you know, there's plays to be made here and, you know, there on the field. So we'll see if they can kind of switch things around and uh, get this offense going in the right direction. Well, not doing well on first down doesn't help. Chance will keep it himself. And a good pursuit that time and dragged down by Cam Elam, academic All-Stater, and a two-year starter for the Vikings defensively. Well, he's just taken off here on a sweep. There was no uh, complexity to that particular play. And I'm just wondering, maybe if there's a, maybe Ryan McLaughlin might have a little sprained ankle or he's not at 100 percent. That's the only possible thing I could think of right now that he's not really been a bigger part of this offense thus far. More on that in a moment. Third and six. Chance looking to throw. Pressure. Avoids it somehow. Ooh. And then gets popped. Loses the football. It's a loose ball. Still nobody has gotten it back. And now it's picked up by Zach Heron. I believe that was Hayden Long with the big hit. And there's a flag on the play. You can see the, pre the pressure he gets right here. He tries to scramble and makes a play, and he really gets popped right here. And then it's uh, it's up for grabs. We'll find out what the penalty is here well, soon. From the booing from the Tri Valley side, it sounds like it's going to go against them. And Coach uh, Root would give you the opinion it's going against them also. Chance are calling it on number five, Hayden Long. We saw in that play, Dave Bates says Drew Chance has a, a little Tebow in him, how he runs with the football. He, I think he's got a little Tony Romo in him, and I mean the good part of Tony Romo, where he scrambles and makes plays out of nothing. Well, it's important to have a quarterback can keep plays alive with their feet. Oh, that's a pretty good call by the official right there. That helmet really did make helmet to helmet contact. So I think that was an excellent call by the officials right there. First and ten, Auburn with Laughlin with the carry. Jack mentioned we haven't seen much from Ryan McLaughlin in this game. And in talking to some of the folks that cover Auburn, they would see him go out of games and wonder, well, why why is coach taking him out of the games? Well, he has asthma. So that could be some of the reason. I'm not saying it is, but that's uh, his first carry right there. Chance rolling right. And it's complete. Falling to his knees. It's Drew points with his first catch of the game. Pick up of 12. Good play call right there and good execution. You can see him roll out, everybody blocking back. 
good throw on the run, a little deflected. The ball yeah. was deflected, which made Drew kind of change his route a wee bit. You can see the hand go up Kinsella, right there. Kinsella Deflects got a it. hand on it. Great concentration right there by Drew Points. Excellent concentration for a big catch and a very big first down. And it's interesting, Drew Points used to be the quarterback for Auburn until Drew Chance moved into the district. And now we've got a flag on the play. Drew Chance. That ball foul. False start in the offense number three. As the penalty goes against Auburn. Drew Chance was a quarterback at Sacred Heart Griffin, transferred back home to Auburn. He lives about five blocks from the school. And when that happened, Drew Points kind of suggested maybe he go to wide receiver while well, they played summer seven on seven and the first three catches for Drew Points went for touchdowns and Dave Bates said eh, maybe on to something. No, Dave Bates isn't in the Hall of Fame for no reason at all. He's been coaching there for 29 years has 224 wins. Chance looking deep and a nice deflection at the last moment by Ben Elam. Big number 71 and you're thinking why is a defensive lineman in coverage? Well Ben Elam is the ultimate flexible defender. He can play nose guard linebacker and cornerback. I asked Josh Rupp, I was like have you ever seen a player be able to play all three play be physical up front be mobile at linebacker and still play cover as your quarterback he's never had anybody like him in my life well that tells you what kind of an athlete he is obviously second and 15 chance looking to throw again he's got green in front of him to the left and he'll take it down to the 25 now to the 21 yard line just shy of the 20 on that carry for drew chance a pickup of 16 as he Ad libs a little bit here. Well, just by raising that ball up in the air, got him an extra five yards right there because it held off the defender somewhat and think he might still throw the football, kind of a, what we call a freeze point, and uh, was able to uh, pick up a big first down to keep this drive alive. They say it hit the turf. Ben Johnson, I thought he had it. He did a nice job of trying to sell it. I almost kind of think that uh, that Auburn's making it tougher on themselves on first down when they're coming up short almost every time. I could see throwing it on second down, maybe if you need seven and you can come back, but they've had a couple opportunities on first down where they've had even completions that forced big situations for him as far as second and third down calls. Chance keeps it on second and ten, picks up about five. Well they need to score right here psychologically to get back in this ball game. Because really for the most part, Tri Valley has dominated the game offensively, if not just on the scoreboard. Third and six. I'd say it's a big third and six, but I'm guessing Auburn might go for it here if they don't get it on third down. Now they're going to call timeout. They want to talk it over. They didn't like what they saw there, so they will take a timeout here with 5.49 to go in the quarter. An important play, an important drive for Auburn in the terms of the state championship game. Well, I think what he saw too was there, do there was double coverage on points. And that was the reason for the uh, timeout because the pass play that was called could have been a slant and they had a linebacker on the inside doubling them and they didn't want to force a, uh, a throw in the coverage. We talk about that one and three start for Auburn. They lost those three games by a total of 11 points. 31 28 to Williamsville 27 26 to Pleasant Plains. They had passes into the end zone on the final play of both of those games. Completions would have won the contest. And then in their third loss in that run, they lost to North Mac in overtime, 35-28. They turned the ball over six times in the, that ball game. So they have recovered. And, you know, we talk about Dave Bates believing in his team at one and three, and his actual quote then was, I just told them I wouldn't want to play Auburn at six and three in the playoffs. Well, somebody did, and that somebody was Shelbyville, and that was the first win, and they are still on a roll here at 10-3, and three, playing for his championship today. 
after a one and three start. Well, they're going to put the pressure on right here. Third down. Chance looking for points all the way. Pan uh, points can't come up with it. Chance knocked to the field. Good pressure that time by Drew Points. Or check that by Hayden Long in the Tri Valley defense. Well, that, that stunt right up the middle forced him to underthrow the football. And by formation, they forced to go to single coverage on points because they put four receivers to the other side of the, of the field. And just as we thought, they will go for it on fourth and six. Chance has a man. Ooh. It's complete. It'll depend on the spot. The catch by Ben Johnson. It's going to be very close. Those chains are going to come all the way across the field. He rolls to this side. A tough throw for a right hander throwing it to the left. You can see a nice catch. This is going to be a dramatic, dramatic mark of the football right here. Wow, that's close. They say it's a game of inches. It may be a game of inch on this one. This is very close. Depends on the link of a chain. Auburn Trojan fans are on their feet with apprehension right here. So are the Tri Valley fans. This is a big one. Here. Oh! <laughs> there you go. The by the by literally the nose of the football. They don't get much closer than that. Wow. Well, you go to your go to guy right there. They went to points to make a, a, a good route and a good throw. It is a first down and it's a timeout now for Josh Roop and Tri Valley. He's not real happy with his defense on this drive. Auburn's offense has come alive here as we are here late in the second quarter, 540 to play before the half. And if the remainder of the games are going to be anything like the game we just had before and today, we've seen four good four good quarterbacks and all four of them can run and they were all big contributors to their offense and the remainder of the games this afternoon and all day tomorrow are going to be the same way outstanding quarterbacks with every team that we have in the state championship games some very exciting football ahead of us big play Series. Hayden Long had to come off with an equipment problem for Tri Valley defensively, and the rest of his teammates step it up here as Chance is brought down after no game. So that just that play just hit way too slow. The defensive surge is what forced that play. They dro drove the offensive line right in the back. You can see right there, they stalemated at the line of scrimmage, and he had nowhere to go. Good job right there by Matt Sorensen. Second and goal. Chance looks to run it. Nothing doing there. Tom Dolan with the initial grab on Drew Chance. Loses a couple there. Well, defensively, they've been outstanding all year long. They give up 107 yards rushing. Usually 51 passing for a game, and they've been only given up eight points a game through 13, so they've got an outstanding defense. It's always overshadowed, though, by their offense. Third and 12. Chance rolls right, and it's picked off. Tom Kinsella with the interception. He's still on his feet at the 30, and finally dragged down from behind at the 35-yard line. The interception for Tom Kinsella, the leader on defense. He's number one on the team now with six interceptions and a 32 yard return. A big defensive play there for Tri Valley as they lead it 21 nothing here on Comcast Sportsnet. Back at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Lee Hall, Jack McInerney, Donnie Tillman, Tri Valley with a big interception. 
by Tom Kinsella as they stop Auburn on their best offensive drive of the game. And now Peyton Roop dropped for a loss of a couple. Looks Aubrey like so. Beard in on the stop there for Auburn. Looked like a miscommunication right there. The back went in the wrong direction. You can see uh, Peyton Roop making sure that that won't happen again. We talk about that one and three start, and Dave Bates says we just had a hard time keeping teams off the field the first four weeks. We made a couple of adjustments in the middle of the year. It's been the difference. They moved uh, Caden Minch to offense outside linebacker, Sam Candidate to defensive end. They've got a six man rotation on the D line. And that's changed things up for Auburn. Peyton Root looked like he wanted to throw that time, Jack, but uh, again, he's dropped for a loss as Auburn. Covers it well, and the line would come up and take him down. Well, they took that receiver away immediately, and so that White pulled it down so very quickly. He had nowhere to go. It was a single, a single route play. But when you're looking into the eyes of a quarterback who's been in front of that huddle for three years as a starter, that's what develops the confidence in those guys that are looking at him. When he calls a play, that he is very assertive and knows that he knows that it can go. Brings up third down and 15. They haven't been in this situation all day. Root fighting to get back to the original line of scrimmage, which he does. Interesting play calling there after having so much success getting the ball down the field the first several drives that they've had the ball. Well, I think that there's probably some adjustments that have to do with, uh, with Auburn that they made against that particular offense. And those are the type of uh, assessments you have to make. And un unfortunately, you got to do them on the sidelines. You can't wait till halftime or you'll be out of the ball game. And they need to make those adjustments, which they did, and force the stop here. Devin Smith back to punt. He averages about 22 per game. This one with the win. And he gets that turf roll that we talked about. Caden Mitch let it bounce. And yeah. what a bounce it took down inside the 20 yard line. You got to feel the ball. 57 yard punt. And the other position not quite as good as Auburn would have liked. The other part that. of that, uh, Lee, is the fact that nobody was holding up the coverage people, just allowing them a free. That's some of the reasons why the guy can't handle the ball downfield because nobody's holding anybody. You can't up. handle the ball. Well, and the thing is that uh, he's not going to be able to handle the ball unless they, they stop somebody at the line of scrimmage with a holdup call so he can at least feel the ball. We're just giving him free release down there in coverage. Drew Chance all alone in the backfield. And it's caught by Ben Johnson, and he could take it to the house. Peyton Root trying to catch him, and he does. Ben Johnson with the big catch. <laughs> Biggest play of the day for either team, a 62-yard pickup. That was the only receiver to that side, Jack. And the defender went for the ball. That was Brock Danko went for the ball and didn't come up with it in a huge game for Auburn as they try to cut into that 21 point lead before halftime here as we approach the two minute mark. And a good point. Can they capitalize on this? They've been in the situation before and came up with uh, giving up an interception. They've got to be able to throw one in here. Chance looking to throw again. Danko on the coverage. Johnson was the intended receiver. Well, they're going back to Johnson because by, by putting Painter up on the top with three other receivers in the trip formation, they're taking a defender over there and they're forcing single coverage down here in Johnson. He's 6'2, so he's got a little height over his 5'9 defender. Second and 10 from the 20. Two minutes to play, first half. Just out of the reach of Kate Minch, the intended receiver. Well, again, we're in two down territory right here. And it's a combination of Tri Valley doing a good job of, of defending the pass. And part of that factor is that Tri Valley, four of those defensive backs were starters last year, and they're all back. So those are veterans. Here comes the rush and a sack for Tri Valley. The defense steps up again with a huge stop. Cam Elam, the 
academic All-Stater. We mentioned his name earlier. He gets in there and drops chance for a loss of 10. And that'll bring up fourth and 20. And a timeout, Auburn. Boy, we saw Kinsella with the interception and now Elam with the sack. And he was hard charging from that end. Well, he, it took a little too long. His initial receiver was taken away and from the blind side. That's why they always talk about that backside tackle being the big one. And they weren't able to do it today to have somebody who's got to be able to block on the backside because a quarterback doesn't have any rearview mirrors on there. I like that movie, The Blind Side. It was well done. I wouldn't get over the emotional about it, but it was a good movie. Uh, Lee Hall, a longtime veteran IHSA football coach Jack McInerney and Donnie Tillman with you here from Husky Stadium. Big, st uh, shouldn't say stop. It was a big play there for Tri Valley. They will try to come up with a stop here now on fourth and 20. And I guess if you're Auburn, you really don't have much choice but to go for it, do you? I mean, a punt's not going to do you anything. You have here. absolutely no choice at all. Now, what they haven't done at all, and these linebackers are dropping way out, is run any kind of a screen or draw, which can, if you have a, a good field uh, as far as spreading them out, and those linebackers are dropping out of there, and McLaughlin has been a good runner all year. Uh, Chance has trouble with the snap, and now he's dropped for another loss of 10. He just took his eye off the football right there. Ben Elam brought him down. You could see he was looking to his right. Didn't have complete control of the football and good reaction right there by Tri Valley. Now they're going to get the football back with a minute and 30. And up by 21. able to come up with any scores when they're down inside the 20. They've had a couple of opportunities. Movement by the Vikings. I believe it was Jake Set Steiner. Ball, who, full start in the offense. Number 21. Five yeah, he took a step just a little too soon. Timing just a little bit off there. So. Tri Valley with a commanding 21 nothing lead. They haven't uh, been able to add to it the last couple of drives with. Couple incomplete passes and the penalty here. called one other time earlier in the first quarter and then didn't go anywhere because it took too long to develop But there. He made the same motion and took it inside the tackle and then bounced it out. Show some good speed right here and gets him down in good fields position with a minute and 19 left. 39 yard pickup for the senior Brock Danko. Now it's Peyton Roop spinning inside the 15 down to the 13 yard line. Josh Roop urging his troops on. Hurry up. They've got one timeout left. Danko again. He's inside the 10 down to about the six yard line. Josh Roop says he is the toughest kid I've ever been around. Brock has a rare circulation problem in his limbs. Very painful in the cold. So imagine how he was suffering last week. All he did last week was score a 60 yard touchdown on the first play of the game. Well, that was a good play right there. And most of it was made by Hayden Long, the fullback, in a punch up block. Roop keeps it himself. And he walks into the end zone for the touchdown. Peyton Roop. So now four touchdowns, four different backs scoring for Tri Valley as Peyton Roop joins the hit parade. His 16th rushing touchdown of the year and celebration on the sideline. And the big surge you can see there right by the offensive line. You can see how many guys are downfield. And that's been the difference fact that they've been able to the surge of the offensive line right there. I mean, there's a giant hole right there that you probably could have scored on Lee. Yeah, I, mm, probably is the key it's word. Not carried away. But a great job by the offensive line right there. Elam, Lackey, and Smith. Super job at the point of attack. 
extra point will move back a little bit and that's just the exuberance there you get a look at that experienced quarterback Peyton Root he's played 36 games as quarterback when you count the games he played as a running back as a freshman he's played over 40 varsity games in his career this is his second state championship game extra point kick was kind of a knuckle ball it's no good. It's 27 nothing Tri Valley with 33 seconds to go here in the first half Four plays, 61 yards. And Danko was the key. Better than a yard per second. But actually, on that, the offensive line and Hayden Long, the fullback, need a lot of credit. Danko made the runs. And of course, Peyton Root made the run. But that offensive line and the blocking of the fullback, Hayden Long, created the possibilities for those runs to be made. Matt Sorensen, Cam Elam, Ben Elam, Alex Smith, Foster Lakee, Hunter Merritt up front. And they are outweighed 237 average, 237 to 206. But that's one of the reasons why, for example, their offensive line averages 205 pounds. And the service academies went to this particular offense because they were always outweighed by linemen. So this is the type of offense where there's more quickness involved and there's more angles and different type of blocking schemes. You don't need big, powerful linemen. And that's why the fullback is in so close to the quarterback. It's very quick hitting. So a, a great job of uh, by Coach Rupa deciding what to go with. And he certainly has the personnel to run it. That's exactly what he talks about. He's angles and quickness. Sydney Landers again with the return on those short kicks. Tri Valley fans pretty happy, huh? Pretty good cover. Boy, Tom Kinsella is not bashful. No, he is. <laughs> He's made some plays in this ball game. Big interception keep Auburn out of the end zone. 28 seconds now here in the first half. And Ryan McLaughlin just has not been able to get going today. He averages on 15 yards a game. And he stopped for no gain right there. And the way Tri-Valley is playing, you'd almost think that they're playing platoon football. As aggressive and as fresh it seems to be by both sides of the football. But they have nine players going both ways, including that young man right there. So, I mean, it's outstanding the conditioning that they have and how aggressive they are. They have nine football players going both ways. Tri Valley fans are on their feet. It's been all Vikings in the first half. 27 0 the score at halftime. They've got three running backs, well, three backs, including their quarterback, Peyton Roop, over 1,000 yards this year. Four touchdowns today, four different backs score. All about balance for Tri Valley, and they've been really balanced coming into this football game. Let's go downstairs to Donnie Tillman. He's with Josh Roop. All right, thanks, Lee. Coach Roop, uh, pretty much a perfect uh, first half for the most part. I mean, all you can ask for is a head coach. Yeah, kids are playing hard. Uh, we're taking care of the football right now. We got to get rid of our penalties. That's a worry right now. And when you're playing a team like Auburn that can throw the ball, you, we still got 20 more, 24 more minutes of football, and we got to take care of business. I believe I heard no let down, no let up. Is that the case here? No let downs right now. We got another 24 minutes of football, uh, and they are explosive. So we got to take care of them here. All right. Good luck in the second half, coach. All right, Class 2A state championship game right now. Tri Valley leading Auburn 27 to nothing. We'll set it to break here at the Class 2A state championship in DeKalb. Halftime at Husky Stadium right now in the Class 2A state championship game where the Tri-Valley Vikings lead the Auburn Trojans 27 to nothing as we get set for an incredible second half here in DeKalb, Illinois. All IHSA athletes dream of hitting it big and playing on TV someday. For football players, it's the dream of playing college ball on Saturday or maybe on Sundays in the NFL. One special IHSA athlete in Canton has already reached that dream, just not in a sport that you would guess. WMVD's Kurt Pegler has the story. November is a great month for Sydney Wells. 
hoops and hunting over land. I'll go to open gym before basketball season actually starts and hurry up and get to my tree stand. So about every day and like at the start of the season, I'll go hunting. And now that basketball started, I plan on going Saturday, Sunday, all day long. Sydney loves to hit softballs and hit teammates with passes that lead to baskets. But what she really loves to hit is her hunting targets with arrows from her bow, which she's been shooting for as long as she can remember. When I'm sitting in a stand and I see like a big buck or like a big bear or even a fish that like gets the adrenaline pumping, like it's different than basketball and softball. It's like you're by yourself. A lot of people outside of Canton aren't really aware of uh, the depth and uh, the abilities that she has as, a, as an outdoors person. There's a big black bear up ahead of us. Hunting and fishing are in Sydney's blood. Her father, Tim, hosts an outdoors show called Relentless Pursuit on the Sportsman's Channel. Sydney's been on it quite a bit. The 18-year-old has an endorsement deal with She Outdoors, camo gear for girls. It's her goal to get young females involved in hunting, making great memories, in the outdoors. That's what I'm hoping for. When I'm older, I mean, out, there'll be more girls that were like the outdoors and hunt more, and that's the best. Incredible story right there. Two teams in the Class 2A state championship right now hunting for that illustrious title. Right now, it's the Tri-Valley Vikings who are within striking distance of that target. They lead it 27 to nothing over the Auburn Trojans. We'll be back with more from DeKalb. And welcome back to Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois, for the Class 2A, I should say, state football championship. All right, in our first game in Class 1A, it was Arcola who defeated Sark County by a score of 35 to 17. Right now, at halftime, 27-0 Tri-Valley over Auburn. Now, coming up later this afternoon, in the Class 3A state championship game, it'll be Kankakee McNamara taking on Tolono Unity. And then later tonight in Class 4A, at 7 o'clock, it'll be Chicago Field back in the state championship game. It'll take on Belleville all top Catholic. Tomorrow in 5A, it's LaGrange Park, Nazareth Academy taking on Lincoln Way West. Class 6A, Lombard Montini taking on Creek Moni. In 7A at 4 o'clock tomorrow, Lombard West takes on Libertyville. And Loyola Academy takes on Chicago Marist Saturday at 7 p.m. in the Class 8A state championship. Again, right now in the Class 2A ball game, Tri-Valley leads Auburn 27 to nothing as we get you ready for your second half right here at the state championship games at NIU. And welcome back to Husky Stadium on the campus of Northern Illinois University. Lee Hall, Jack McInerney, and Donnie Tillman with you. 27-0, Tri-Valley leading Auburn here at the half. The number one team in the state has looked very much like the best team in the state for the first half of action. As we take a look at the first half highlights, it's all Vikings here. Jake Steiner gets the scoring started here on this nice run as he races to the pylon for a 7-0 lead. Then it's Hayden Long right up the gut for a 14-0 Tri-Valley lead. And then it's the third player to score for the third touchdown, third different player, Brock Danko with the score. And then how about the Tri-Valley defense? Don't forget about us, Hayden Long with the big pop here on the quarterback. He was whistled for a penalty on that, by the way. Auburn was down 21 nothing looking to get into the end zone here driving and looking good until Tom Kinsella comes up with this interception and return to keep it a 21 nothing lead and more defense here from Tri Valley. It's Cam Elam with the sack and all those defensive plays allowed Tri Valley to get the ball back take it in for another score four touchdowns four different players Peyton Roof with the touchdown and boy all you have to do is look at the rushing yards Jack and that tells you the tale of this game well and that's actually just the first half they average normally 407 yards so we still have a lot an awful lot of offense to see from them in the second half if Auburn doesn't tighten down because they have just been 
uh, amazing as far as running this flex bone. Everything that they wanted to run has run well. The fullback right up the middle on the inside uh, midline. They run the option in the wing on the outside. Everything has gone for them their way and not only offensively but defensively. They've been outstanding this first half. And Josh Roof mentioned the penalty six for 37 yards in the first half. That's about the only blemish on the first 24 minutes of football for the Tri Valley Vikings. They lead it here 27 nothing at halftime. We'll have second half action coming your way on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back to Husky Stadium for the Class 2A state championship game where the Auburn Trojans right now trail the Tri-Valley Vikings 27-0 at the half. I'm joined right now by head coach Dave Bates. Coach, uh, what did you tell your team in halftime? Well, it's not over till it's over. we got to come out and, you know, offensively we get the ball. Um, we're going to air it out a little bit see what happens. It's not like we haven't done it before. Um, and, you know, we got to contain the quarterback on defense. Coach, has their speed been a problem for you so far in the first half? Well, they're aggressive. They're coming after you. And uh, it took us a while to adjust to it, and we just got to keep going. All right, good luck in the second half. All right, that is Auburn coach Dave Bates joining me right now. I'll send it back up to the booth with Lee and Jack. All right, Donnie, thanks a lot. Thanks to Dave Bates for joining us here at halftime. Uh, you know, and Dave talked to earlier this week about maybe losing helped us. I mean, we, we helped us figure things out. We didn't panic, helped us loosen our grip, and you know, maybe that relying on that kind of experience helps you here second half. Well, not only that, but it, it certainly, excuse me, d develops character in a team when they're able to be able to to come back and have the season like they have to get into this ball game, winning nine straight. But that was a perfect example right there of Coach Bates, uh, you know, an Illinois High School Hall of Famer. He's been at uh, Auburn for 29 years and has won 224 games. So. He's he's been in ball games like this. He knows what what adjustments to make at halftime. Sometimes you can make all the adjustments that you want to make, and it just comes down to do you have the skill people and the personnel to be able to make those adjustments with. The Trojans in their first ever state championship game. Uh, they were close a couple of years ago. They lost to Williamsville last year. They lost to Staunton in the semifinals, and that's. Dave Bates looks back on that game and thought maybe the team was a little tight. So he's kind of glad that his team was a little bit looser coming into today's game. Lost to Pleasant Plains in the first round back in 2012. And here's a look at the Tri-Valley playoff history. Lost to Maroa Forsyth in the first round a year ago. Maroa Forsyth played for the state championship, uh, finishing second. Uh, Tri-Valley finished second the year before that to Lena Winslow. And then uh, lost to Weathersfield in the second round back in 2012. So this is, uh, you know, a little bit different roads to get here. Dave Bates in his 29th year as head coach. Josh Roop just his eighth year. Tri-Valley hasn't had football all that long because, as we mentioned early in the broadcast, they co-op with Leroy. Leroy was in the 1A semifinals last week. And uh, what a great year for the heart of Illinois Conference as Tri-Valley makes it to the championship game here this year. Josh Roop uh, also, by the way, has a nephew on Auburn's team. He's a freshman, doesn't play much as just a freshman, but uh, a little bit of a family affair there. He'd probably be here at this game either way if they were playing in it or not. Well, as luck would have it, it just seemed as if uh, Tri-Valley just played a near-perfect first half right there, and certainly that didn't help Auburn, but uh, onside kick. And recovered by... Auburn, a little, little switcheroo, a little uh, strategery there into the wind. Well, in the other part of that right now, here's Dave Bates going to say he's got great field position. He talked about coming out throwing. Well, you got great field position to start with right off the bat, so we'll see how productive they can be. Chance throws on first down. That's complete to Colby Bossman, a 6-1 sophomore. Now let's keep in mind also that Tri-Valley does know that they're going to have to throw the football to get back in the ball game, so they've made adjustments anticipating that. You'll see the linebackers playing a lot looser. You'll see more people standing up and creating more stunts coming after the quarterback, which they did right here. Pressure from the Vikings. Chance stays on his feet and gets a first down. Nice. 
job there, improvising by Drew Chance, the seniors rush for 802 yards on the season coming into this game. There's a look at his first half stats. Nothing real impressive. He's going to need to really uh, do a little better in the second half to get them back in the ball game. But I'm, I'm sure he's certainly capable of it based on his career at Auburn thus far. Here comes the rush again and the sack that time for Tri Valley. It was Hayden Long with the sack there. One of the nine players on Tri Valley that goes two ways. He's their starting fullback and inside linebacker, an outstanding football player. Well, you said it. If they know they're going to pass, Tri Valley's going to come, and they're getting good pressure on him here. A little quick hitter to two points. And he stopped immediately. Peyton Root with the tackle at the original line of scrimmage. Everything for the most part, depending on how poor the field position, is really four down territory for Auburn. It's third and nine now for Auburn from the 36. Yep, there's five. See how there's only one defender down, the nose man over the center. Everybody else is standing up, which makes it a little more aggressive look to be able to block. And Auburn calls line. timeout. Didn't like the look there. 10 14 to go in the third. Auburn trying to make something happen here. They trail by 27. And we're back in DeKalb. And it's Auburn trailing 27 0 on third and nine. Drew Chance back to throw. Here comes the pressure again. And it's another sack for Hayden Long of Tri Valley. Well, a little frustration setting in here for Auburn, which you can understand. But a good job by, the, by that veteran secondary of Tri Valley. Remember we mentioned all four defensive backs were starters last year on that outstanding football team. They take away the, the receivers now which allows that front stunts and those linebackers to get to the quarterback. A lot of frustration right here with Drew Chance. Long has gotten the sacks but boy the, the push and the pressure by the other Tri Valley linemen really set that up for them. And that punt will roll dead at about the six yard line. We've got two more state championship games after this one today and tomorrow the IHSA state football championship games continue class 5A through 8A championship games watch tomorrow beginning at 10 a.m. Visit CSNChicago.com slash IHSA for complete listings. A lot of the usual suspects, Tim Racky in Nazareth, Chris Andriano and Montini will be here among others tomorrow. We've got 3A and 4A football to follow here. 2A championship game is Tri-Valley with a commanding lead, the ball, and on the move again is Brock Danko. Well, they've really gone to the well with all their various play plays off to the uh, flex bone, keeping Auburn off balance. Running outside, inside, the quick traps. Just an awful lot of unbalanced uh, plays here to keep uh, the defense of Auburn really for the most part. 12 yards for Danko. He's been over 100 yards in three of the four playoff games for Tri Valley. I'm really impressed with the uh, offense of, of Tri Valley. And of course, Peyton Roop is the, the, the leader of it in commanding this. Gained 66 yards on the ground as a sophomore in the state championship game. He is back here today. He's got 127 yards. This time he gives to Hayden Long, who's now the all the single season rushing record leader for Tri Valley. And Peyton Roop with 127 yards needs just nine yards to become Tri Valley's all time leading rusher. Well, and those stats are, are really interesting because this season, for example, they had so many games that had running clocks where they weren't even playing in the fourth quarter and most of the third. Give us to Long and he fumbles. And it's Auburn ball, so a break 
for the Trojans there. Tri-Valley with the ball and the lead on the move again, and they turn it over. Tyler Graham at the right place at the right time. Good tackle right there. Graham falls on the football. Sidney Landers put the hit on long to kind of knock it loose. Actually, that was uh, somebody else got a home Sidney Landers right at the end there. Nothing doing for Drew Chance. And Tri Valley defense has played well all game. They're they really stepping it up here. Now. They really have that defense in front. Because right now they're kind of in a, they're in a nickel look. They took out a, uh, a defensive lineman. They brought in another defensive back, knowing that uh, the Trojans are going to have to throw the ball more here in the second half. And so they're going basically with uh, one defensive lineman, as you can see over the center, two outside linebackers, and another DB. Quick hitter to Drew points. We haven't said his name an awful lot today. We talked about teams kind of taking him away the last couple of weeks. Of course, the, the weather had a little bit to do with that last week. But uh, Nashville holding him to seven catches and 30 yards. He's the all time leading receiver in several different categories, not to mention the 2,100 career yards receiver. But we haven't been able to get him the ball much today. Third down. Chance under pressure again. Brought down again and a host of Tri Valley tacklers there this time. Hunter Merritt in on the stop. Hayden Long was late to the party. There was three or four blue shirts bringing him down. You can see the stunts right there that the man over the center goes in one direction on a loop move and the linebacker comes over the top of him and another linebacker coming from the outside. So basically relentless pressure from four different people at the line of scrimmage and the linebackers. Fourth and 12. Chance has it picked off. That's long. Check that, that's Kinsella with his second pick and he's still on his feet at the 35. 50. Oh now, he's, now he's got a chance to take it all the way. Oh my goodness, one man to beat. What a run. Oh, Tom Kinsella, 81 yards on the pickoff and touchdown. I don't see any flags on the play. Whoa. Tom Kinsella what with an the effort. pick. Almost had his helmet and maybe his head taken off. Somehow stayed on his feet. Check it out. Here's the pick right here. Great effort. But now, watch this run here. This is amazing. Sandlot Two, football. three, four. At least four tacklers shed there by Tom Kinsella as he takes it to the house in a 33 0 Tri Valley lead. Jake Ward, the point after up and good. 34 0, the Tri Valley lead after Tom Kinsella's second interception of the game. A little Houdini action here to avoid all the tacklers and take it into the end zone for the score. A well deserved rest for Tom Kinsella after that 81 yard interception <laughs> return for a touchdown and what a play he made what effort by the six foot senior Tom Kinsella and he, really, he hasn't come off the field all day long that's the first rest they've given him and a well deserved one to boot Ooh, and another hit. that's Hayden Law with the hit on the return boy they, the Vikings are uh, not shy and then talking to coaches getting ready for last week and this week and they talked about the physicality of Tri Valley and the way they are really they, the way they hit the way they're able to really play physical style of football. This is this is a situation you can't coach. This is just a great jump on the football that he originally got. And we'll get back to that later but uh, Auburn's really got their hands full. Tri Valley just can't do anything wrong. Chance back to throw. He's hit from the blind side, loses the football, and it's Tri Valley ball. Hunter Merritt with the hit knocked it loose, and Elam, that's Cam Elam, coming up with the recovery. 
again, there's just no way that the offensive line can sustain any kind of blocking up front. They're just coming from every direction through every gap, as you can see. Just too much pressure getting a head start. He has no time to look downfield. And that's that Tri Valley speed, Jack. And you can see the speed of of uh, Merritt getting around the defender or the uh, offensive lineman. They're just too quick for him. Group with it. They'll take it down to about the 21 yard line. Pick up of eight. You know, he's very close to be, uh, being the all time leader now. He needed 130, what was it, 136 yards coming into the ball game to become the all time leading rusher and bypass his former teammate, Caleb Wilson, who was on that second place team back in 2013. He needs one more yard. 34 0, the Tri Valley lead. A little, little time run here. It was to Hayden Long. So a record-setting day stats-wise. Hayden Long earlier became the single-season rushing record holder as he broke Braden Herman's record from a year ago and Peyton Roof on the verge of becoming the Vikings' all-time leading rusher. So an impressive display all around here, really, by Tri Valley. Just a complete domination of the game on both sides of the football. 34 0. Five minutes plus to go here in the third quarter. Root wants to take it back. <laughs> I don't think Jared Nelson was going to give it give it up. <laughs> it looked like Root was trying to get it back, and Nelson was having no part of it. Well, he didn't. He didn't have, that might have been the first time that he was going to handle the football today, so maybe that's why he wasn't going to give it up. Well, Get a load of this, Jared Nelson against DMAC. He talk about making the most of your carries. He had two carries for 106 yards. He was the fourth Vikings player to rush for over 100 yards in that win over DMAC. Second down. Group keeps it and gets dropped behind the line of scrimmage. This time, Colton McDaniel with the tackle. That was a good job right there by McDaniel. And the thing was, nobody was on the pitch, but I think they realized that he wasn't going to pitch the ball. You can see he tucked it away right away. It was absolutely no threat to be an option as far as pitching the football. And who's to say that they might not come back with the very same play and pitch it this time if they give him that same read? Over 5,000 all purpose yards for the quarterback, Peyton Root. Third down and ten now. Four minutes to play. Third you got it. It's all. Oh. Roop hands it off this time. Steiner takes it all the way down to the five yard line. Pick up of 13. First down. Tri Valley. Steiner scored the first touchdown in this game. And Josh Roop says he's the most improved player on our team. He wasn't running hard early in the season. He's running hard today. Well, he's running hard because that offensive line is giving him openings to run too. They are just completely dominating that front. Elam, Lackey, and uh, Smith, Sorensen doing a great job on that offensive line. You mentioned the uh, military academies earlier. Jake Steiner made a visit to the Air Force Academy earlier this year, back in September. And they're the really the first ones who initiated this this particular type of the offense uh, many years ago. And then Navy has been running it so very successfully. And of course, Georgia Tech is also known for this type of offense. They pitched the ball a little more. And uh, I don't think that, uh, in fact, I'm almost sure that Tri Valley has not pitched the ball once today off of this. And it's basically an, an option, but they use more of the belly series and counter and midline and that type of thing. Second goal from the floor, Roof walks it into the end zone for his second touchdown run of the game. The first team all stater. His teammate Brock Danko told me earlier this week when I asked him about Peyton Roop, he said, he's a man now. That's how far he's come as a quarterback in the last three years. Well, you can see how quickly 58 and, and 71 get out in front of him. Elam and uh, Cameron Elam and Ben Elam just run extremely well. We mentioned it's not a big offensive line. It's only 205 pounds, which is relatively small, but they run extremely well. Point after by Jake Ward is good, and with that touchdown run, Peyton Roop has now become Tri Valley's all time leading rusher, bypassing his 2013 senior teammate, Caleb Wilson. 
Now this though on all levels it's Tri Valley with a dominant performance here now up 41 to nothing. And really a tribute to that offensive line and defensive front. I mean, they've just done an outstanding, standing job of playing football today. They just, I, I, I kind of think it doesn't make any difference who they'd be playing today. It's been that kind of a performance for Tri Valley. Matt Sorensen, Cam Elam, his brother Ben Elam, Alex Smith, Foster Lakey, Hunter Merritt doing a lot of the moving and pushing around out there. and. Josh Roof says we're not very athletic up there or I say it says we're very athletic up there rather but we're not very big most games we give up the size advantage and that's the case here today but four of those five guys on the offensive line have a 3.5 GPA or better so they're not just big they're bright too. well not only that and that you know that is kind of a, a comment you say well offensive line what didn't need to be bright about well with all the different defensive schemes you'll see they have to make calls at the line of scrimmage to set up their blocking schemes. They might X block, they might full block, depending on right. angles and that type of thing. So yes, they do have to be bright, and they are bright, and they're very effective. But one of the things that really impressed me when I was watching the film on them and going through the game tapes and looking at stats, the average that most of these running backs have in this offense is amazing. I mean, you look at the statistics, and of course, they won a lot, awful lot of games where they didn't play in the fourth quarter and barely played in the third quarter but you know they average nine points a carry ten points a carry uh, six it's just an amazing stat as far as how well that offensive line gives them hope holds a run to nothing doing there for Ryan McLaughlin and uh, it is a running clock now oh, yes. Tri Valley up 41 to nothing here. And something that they're used to. They scored 75 points in their ninth game of the year. They scored 63 points in one game, 62 in another, 57 in another. And the defense. Coming strong again for Tri Valley, and uh, luckily that was batted down. Luckily for Drew Jansen and for Auburn. As much as I like to see a team play as well as they can, and that's certainly what Tri, Tri, uh, Tri Valley is doing today. I I really feel bad for Auburn that they have run up against this buzzsaw in a game like today. Complete to three points. And very close to a first down. Pick up of eight. So Auburn will have to go for it here on fourth and one. It's just chance right up the middle. He puts a stiff arm out and takes it down to the 45 yard line. Shook up on that particular play at the end of the quarter here, almost the end of the quarter. I think they'll probably let the clock run out. Good job right here, but we talked about Drew Chance and what a tough runner he is at 6'1, 200 pounds. And uh, you know, he has over 800 yards of rushing. But the thing that he hasn't been able to do today is throw the ball effectively. Because coming into this ball game, he averaged 13 uh, completions on 23 attempts. There, Drew points asking for and getting the flag. Peyton Roop in coverage, and he got there a little too soon. Yeah, Drew Chance throwing for over 2,200 yards, and, and Dave Bates saying, you know, late last year we started to run him. And it made us a little bit better. So he's, you know, Best over 3,000 yards combined. 17, 15 yard penalty. Well, any time that you time down to the third quarter. Any time that you have a quarterback that can run as well as throw, that's a tremendous advantage for the offense. And with that, the clock runs out in the third quarter. So. Oh, I'm time down. Sorry. Defense, 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 defense. Defense, defense. 
so it will be a freebie here for Drew Chancellor. And in this case, a freebie for Tri-Valley as the defense comes in and comes up with another sack. Matt Sorensen in on the stop there. The Tri-Valley fans all fired up, and why not? 41-0 the lead with 12 minutes to play. Back after this on Comcast Sportsnet. 41-0 Tri-Valley leads Auburn as we get ready to start the fourth quarter of the Class 2A State Championship. I'm joined by Vikings Athletic Director Brian Knudsen. And a long time ago, I used to call him Budden for scores for basketball and other sports. And now he's retiring at the end of the year. And what brought that all about? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. I'm going to finish up this year. And what a way to go out. You know, a state title, it looks like. So it'll be great. The football team has played so well, and you've watched this program grow. Just how exciting is it uh, just watching Tri-Valley come out here and perform on the stage? Well, I mean, it's incredible because, you know, you're only about 14 years old as far as football, and, uh, you know, they just get better and better. And Coach Roop has got them at a level I had no idea we could reach. And, uh, I mean, to be in a state title man like this, it's you never dreamed it would happen. Brian, two years ago, you guys are here. You're almost there. You can kind of taste it, and you come up short. Did you think that you would get back to this point and then dominate like you have today? Well, I mean, I knew we'd be a good ball club, but I didn't know. I don't think anybody had an idea that we'd be like this. And so with the kind of sophomores we played a couple years ago, they're seniors now. We had a shot, but you never know. A lot of stuff's got to go right, and uh, boy, it sure did. Well, I can't bug you now. I mean, I guess I can still call you, but what do you do now that you're retiring? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll be a TV guy like you. <laughs> I think your job might pay a little bit better, but we'll, <laughs> that remains to be determined. Brian, I appreciate you taking out the time. and Enjoy the rest of this game and enjoy this, what could be a possible championship for Tri-Valley. Hey, thank you lots for great work with you. All right, thank you. That is Brian Knudsen, the athletic director of Tri-Valley, watching his Vikings put on a show as they lead this game 41-0 early here in the fourth quarter. All right, Donnie, thank you very much. And thanks to Mr. Knudsen. Best of luck to him in retirement. Boy, a big hit there by Tri-Valley's Jared Nelson. On that play. I think we have a timeout down here. Josh Roop just called timeout. And you talk about, <clears throat> we talked about the, the kids returning, and he mentioned the sophomores that are now seniors. Uh, Josh Roop. Uh, Matt Sorensen and Jared Nelson were were three sophomores who started on that team and and now they do a uh, line shift here as Josh Root goes to his bench and a big hand for his starters who lead it here 41 nothing with 10 minutes to play. Country Financial will help you build a plan with insurance and financial solutions to help you get to where you want to go. Call your local rep at 1-866-COUNTRY or visit countryfinancial.com. Josh Roop has gone to his bench. All new players, 11 new kids out there for the Vikings, and we'll do our very best to try and Find out who these guys are. That was Harley Justice, a 5'5 sophomore with the carry there. And you talk about a luxury of being able to get to go to your bench if you're Josh Roop with nine, four, almost 10 minutes to go in this ball game. You get these kids this experience. There's a lot of young kids out here that are going to get to say they played in a state championship football game. This is a more emotional experience than this physical experience because they have that to take into the uh, off season in the weight room and get them prepared for next year because they have the opportunity saying I stayed in the state championship game. So there's an awful lot that goes along with this, not just getting into this game, but the carryover effect that it has for those younger players as far as encouragement and enthusiasm for the weight room, summer program, and all those type of things within the school. Devin Smith, a 5'9 freshman with the carry there. Under nine minutes to go now. It's a record-setting day for Tri-Valley. That's Casey Hamilton, a 5'6 sophomore with the carry for Tri-Valley. 
would certainly think when they were having Thanksgiving dinner yesterday, they never dreamed that they would be stepping foot on the field here at the Cal Northern Illinois Stadium. And now the veterans come back out for Tri Valley for the punt. That was interesting there was there was no personnel issues. Oftentimes you'll find that they're short of man, they got to call time out because they don't know, have enough on the field. Good job of organization and look at the punt. Evan Smith just did get that away. Good pressure from Auburn. Down inside the 25 yard line. Evan Smith averaging 21.6 yards per punt. Got 41 on that one. And those guys I don't think aren't those feeling are, the cold at all, are they? I don't know if those are ones that we talked about with the high GPA. <laughs> high pain tolerance. Well, I'd, I'd like to see Auburn have a nice drive here, get down the field and score. Chance communicating with the sideline here. He'll keep it himself and takes it out to about the 30. Pick up of six for Drew Chance. We still have most of the starters in there for uh, Tri Tri Valley defensively. I don't know if they want to maintain the shutout or what, but they still have they haven't made any mass substitutions defensively. Good shot right over there by of Dave Bates, who's done a great job here at Auburn. Outstanding football coach, Illinois High School Hall of Famer. 100th season of Auburn Trojans football. Quarterfinal win over Pena was the 600th win for the program. So great tradition at Auburn and a new tradition for Tri Valley. This, this football program not very old as Josh Root gets a big hug on the sidelines from one of his big linemen there Matt Sorensen all stater three year starter very emotional moment on the Vikings side. Here's a chance of a big run and shoestring tackle made there at midfield. It shows you what kind of an athlete it is that that snap bounced in he still made a big play right there. Just outstanding athleticism right here. Good job by Drew Chance, 6'1", 200-pound senior. Pick up with 20. By 40 and counting is running clock. 41 nothing. Tri Valley. Chance looking downfield, almost picked off, and a flag on the play. I think they're going to get interference. Steiner almost got the pick, but I think they're going to get interference. As it looked like the receiver, and I believe that was Drew Points, was impeded a little bit there on the far side. Yeah, he was going down with one arm. His back arm was being held. Top of your screen here. I think you'll be able to see right there. Somebody had his arm. Good call by the officials. This is what I like about defensive the, pass interference number 21. The officials that we get, it's, it, they do a great job. They don't look at the scoreboard to see what scored. If there's a penalty, they're going to call it. Doesn't make any difference what that is. People will say, "Oh, let the kids play." I despise that terminology because that has nothing to do with the game, whether it be basketball or football. They commit a foul or a penalty, call it. That's what it's all about. Those officials do a great job doing that. They all earn their way here, just like the players are scored on a point system by coaches and. People who rate the officials at pass complete. Colby Bossman, the sophomore with the catch. These Auburn kids have not quit. They've kept playing and kept striving here against the Tri Valley team that's been pretty dominant on this day in this 2A state championship game. Drew Chance right up the middle. Nice run there on. Second down, he picks up about seven. That was first down. Now they're actually throwing the ball all the way down, so that was a good call by uh, Coach Bates on the quarterback draw. We haven't, that's the first draw we've seen the entire game. We haven't seen a screen yet. Good to 
see uh, Auburn punch one in here. Chance has thrown for over 100 yards in this game. He's scrambling, fakes the throw, and he's got a first down inside the five. He'll mark it actually at the five. So it'll be first and goal. To Auburn. You got to take victories in life that you can get, and uh, avoiding a shutout with 3:08 and a running clock right now would be a victory of sorts for for Auburn. I agree 100%. percent i would love to see him get a score here. Great effort right there. At the same time, you know this Tri Valley defense has a lot of pride, and they're not just going to let it happen. They're no, gonna they're not going to let it. it happen. But uh, oh, but there it is. Good. There's McLaughlin walks. Right in, virtually untouched, and now a little extra pushing and shoving after the play, which is pretty unnecessary at this point. It really was, but a great job by that official right there of, of verbally chastising him without throwing a flag in this situation. Ryan McLaughlin on a, on a frustrating day. He came in here with the Christopher Columbus yardage, 1492 on the season, and he gets the score there. You can see the official right there. He's going to his pocket, but he talks him out of it. He wasn't talked out of it. He talked the kids out of it. They go for two. Kind of a broken play there. <laughs> it became an inadvertent, indirect snap right there to Ryan McLaughlin, who carries it in for two. And it's 41 to eight. Well, that's the touchdown. Run. They're just getting a chance there to kind of greet each other. How you doing? Really? Tough, a real tough game for Auburn. They just ran into a real buzzsaw on both sides of the football. Everything that could go right went right for Tri Valley. They took advantage of every situation that they afforded as far as field position, and they just uh, really asserted themselves in the very first drive of the ball. Well, and this defense has been great all year. They're allowing 7.7 .7 points per game. And today they've allowed eight. And the, the second quarter all season, second quarters, six points total in the second quarter. I mean, this is a team that has just been stingy to ridiculous ends on defense, and they've shown it here today. Dave Bates, a disappointing finish to his 30th year on the field, Hall of Fame coach. He's disappointed, but it was a great year for his team to get this far along after their start. Absolutely. So he has to have great pride in those kids. Rock Danko on the return. He takes it out across the 30. 236 to play and counting as the clock runs here in this 2A state championship game. Arcola, our 1A state champion. They defeated Stark County earlier, and this has been all Tri Valley in this game as they lead it 41 to 8. Here you get a look at Josh Roop in his eighth year as head coach at Tri Valley. He was a co captain at Leroy at the Tri Valley Leroy Co op back in the 90s. The clock is running, and it's running fast. They actually can't run fast enough for either one of these teams at this point. So Tri Valley is going to add to their trophy case. They have a they have the uh, twin to the '96 championship trophy that is in Leroy. When you're a, when you're a co-op school, each school gets a trophy. So they've got a trophy from that Leroy Co-op 96 championship, and they're going to add another one here today. Downs is just outside of Bloomington. If you're headed to Champaign, east on I-74, you go past Bloomington Normal, that's the first exit is Downs, and that's the home of Tri-Valley High School. As Josh Root goes to his bench and gets some more younger guys out there. Hunter Golick, 5'8 freshman with the carry there. 
Aaron Cussman, junior quarterback. Talking to his coach and heading back in. This is the final game for the father-son combination, Josh and Peyton Root. What a way to go out. A second place trophy two years ago and a championship trophy here today. Championship game right there. Evan Smith with another carry, and that will do it here in 2A. And Josh Roop, not much of an expression there. Maybe a look of satisfaction, relief, and no. a look of, oh my goodness, that's cold. And the first player to hug him is his son, Peyton Roop. What a scene. What a game. They could do nothing wrong. Both sides of the football, outstanding. <laughs> Talking to them this week about the, the father-son relationship, and sometimes at home it's a little iffy. I think it's going to be happy at home tonight. They're going to go back home and have a big celebration at Tri-Valley High School. Here you get a look at the senior quarterback, Peyton Root, the all-time leading rusher in Tri-Valley history. Gets a big handshake from Dave Bates. And Congratulations to Auburn on, on a fantastic recovery from an awful start to the season. And congratulations to Josh Roop and the Tri-Valley Vikings as they finish 14-0 and, and win the state championship. Tri-Valley wins it here in dominating fashion. 41-8. We will have the celebration and award ceremony coming up for you from DeKalb. All that and more high school football the rest of the day here on Comcast Sportsnet. Stand by. Josh Roop giving his team a final talk for the 2015 season. The state champions dominating fashion here today, 41 to 8. Balanced attack. We talked about postseason balance. Coming into this game, Josh Roop had 56 carries, Brock Danko had 57 carries, and Hayden Long had 66 carries. And you look, Steiner, Long, Danko, Roop all scored touchdowns today. So the ability to spread it out and, and have so many weapons. Uh, serve Tri-Valley well all season long as they go 14-0 and and win a state championship. And check this out. They're going to have a little... Both teams are going to get together and take a knee here. That's what high school football is all about right there. Tremendous sportsmanship. And what, a, what a great stage to have that happen at the state championship game. Silence for things that are going on around the world in many ways, but that's but that to me is a great gesture right there. I think it's okay to call it prayer. Pretty touching moment. Uh, two teams give it their all for an entire season. Back to preseason workouts, summer workouts, summer league. Be thankful for. Oh, those are things you just don't see happening in college, unfortunately, and certainly in the pro, in the pro ranks. That's what's so great about high school football. Well, both sides can be pretty proud of the young men after uh, after that display. After two great seasons, one and three start for Auburn. They make it to their first ever state championship game, and for. Tri Valley, it's uh, it's a, even a little bit more impressive. Let's go down to Roop and Son with Donnie Tillman. All right, thanks, Lee. Uh, what a moment for you guys right now. Not only is a state championship, but to celebrate this final football moment as a family. It's unbelievable. I couldn't ask for anything spe more special in my life. This. I can't even describe what I'm feeling right now to spend it with my dad. And he's one of the best people, best coach, best dad I could ever ask for, and it's just unbelievable feeling. 
Peyton, talk about getting back here to state and winning the big title finally. I mean, it was a journey. We always had the motto, unfinished business, and just to get here uh, wasn't good enough this year. And to finish it finally from 2013 is an unbelievable feeling. And I, I'm so proud of my team. Our offense and defensive line played their butts off today, and it was just unbelievable. Do you feel like that experience two years ago really prepared you guys for today, that you knew what to expect to play on this big stage? Yes. Uh, coming back after two years, you know – you know what it's going to be like. You know what the fans are going to be like, how loud it's going to be, and what the experience is going to be. So we just, instead of looking up this time like we did in the past, we just looked forward and just played and battled today, and it was unbelievable. All right, does he go back to being just dad, or is he still dad and coach? I mean, I think it's just dad now, but we'll always share this memory, so it's unbelievable. It's an unbelievable feeling. All right, go join your teammates. Coach, let me get you in here real quick. So, uh, I guess I could ask you the same thing. What's it like coaching your, your son's final game and uh, winning a state championship? I don't even know how to say. I don't even, I mean, I don't know how to say. It's the. It's like a storybook ending this this year, you know, to be able to take your son and go to state title game two out of three years and to have such great people around both of us, such great teammates in 2013 and this year and great parents and community. Um, words can't express what I'm feeling right now. 2013 was a great team, but what about this year just made it so special that you guys were, were business-like in completing this journey? The 2013 showed these guys that the dream was was a reality. You can get there. You can do it. And, you know, they brought them here, gave them the experience. And and these guys look up to that 2013 team. You know, and there are a lot of brothers from that 2013 team. and and But they all look at them as brothers. And they got here, and they did it, and they wanted to finish it for them today. All right, Coach, there's a trophy over there for you to pick up with your team. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. That is Coach Roop of the now Class 2 a state champion Tri-Valley Vikings. I'll send it back up to the booth. Thanks, Donnie. Yeah, there's a lot of brotherly love as we see the Auburn kids get their second place trophy. And again, congratulations to Dave Bates and his team. Five players on this Tri-Valley squad had brothers on that 2013 team. And, uh, you know, back in the day, they were, you know, they were driving around these seniors and taking them to practice and things like that. And and now they are state champions. And, and they're, to their big brother's credit, they were telling them this week, you know, go get it. Go get it done and bring it home for us and bring it home for this program. Well, that's what happens when I think you come from the communities like they do. And this is what's exciting to me about these, the smaller programs playing for state championships. And they don't have the, the schools are smaller, the teams are smaller, but the kids are closer. There's more unity involved in many cases as far as the coaches, the players, the parents, the whole concept, because it's such a tight-knit community and team and family. The whole, I, when you play with some of the bigger schools, we'll see, you know, it's a whole different issue. But this is really the brand of football I love to watch. And now it's hardware time for Josh Roop and the Tri-Valley Vikings. And we were talking to Josh earlier this week about the program and, and the season before he took over. He was an assistant coach at Normal Community and Normal West. This Tri-Valley football program was 1-8 and eight before Roop took over. He said kids weren't coming out. We didn't get the athletes. He started a special forces program. It taught leadership and community service. Captains have to do resumes before they can be named captains. This football program, these kids did 7,800 hours of community service last year. So it's more than just about teaching them football for Tri-Valley. He's done a pretty good job of teaching them that. He really has. It's great to have a, a outstanding teams and outstanding citizens to work with. And that's what it's all about. Develop that, not only that outstanding athlete, but that outstanding student athlete who becomes a great citizen later in the community. And you talk about brothers and, and family, and this is kind of, uh, <laughs> you get a look at the kids enjoying that trophy. Oh my goodness. It's interesting because the Tri-Valley kids in the past had success in football as a member of that Leroy Co-op. And now they are kind of the, the cousins of that, you know, just, just down the road. I mean, they played together. Now they butt heads and play against each other. But, 
you know, Josh Roop got a feel of that Leroy tradition as a player playing in that co-op and now has kind of brought it down the road to him and now it's uh, it's part of the DNA in Tri-Valley and Downs, Illinois. Well, you know that, that those conversations are circulated all throughout different family gatherings and social gatherings everywhere within those communities, talking about the days that we played and when we played and what we accomplished. The Vikings are 14-0, top ranked in the state, and they prove those rankings to be true here today at Northern Illinois University with a dominant 41-8 win. They let it... From beginning to end, Jake Steiner racing to the pylon for the first touchdown of the day. Hayden Long up the middle for the touchdown. And then here's Brock Danko around in for the touchdown. Three touchdowns, three different players for Tri-Valley. Great balance for this Vikings team all year long. It's a pretty top pick and good defense, too. A big hit there by Long. It was penalized, but a big hit nonetheless. And then Tom Kinsella, his first interception of the day, he brought that back about 40 yards. And it was a, a, an omen, a precursor of things to come for him. Here's another sack by Cam Elam. The defensive line, you can't say enough about their play today. Just a, an Auburn team that had such great success offensively and just stymied here today. Peyton Root, fourth touchdown of the day, fourth Viking to score. The senior becoming the all-time leading rusher for Tri-Valley. This is an unbelievable play right here. Tom Kinsella, his second interception of the day, and watch him go to work. One tackler, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six tacklers. One guy had him around the coconut and couldn't hang on. Tom Kinsella, 80-plus yards on this intercept you've watched a lot of football in your day and you're impressed with that I can oh tell. this is sandlot football you know this is what you see the kids uh, you know on the practice field when they're younger these kind of plays right here a combination of poor tackling and a great effort on his part the only thing missing was the cal band <laughs> that's kind of what it well, reminds you of that, it? that's very true <laughs> very true all the old guys at the booth get that reference and everything happens in the short side of the field, right over there between the hash marks and the numbers. It's not like he tried to break all the way back across the field. He's running out of the gas right here. We were getting run out of gas talking about it. An unbelievable moment for Tom Kinsella that will now live forever in the annals of Tri-Valley football history and IHSA football as Ryan McLaughlin gets into the end zone and uh, a little frustration there by him grabbing the face mask, but uh, understandable under the circumstances. 325 yards rushing for Tri-Valley in this game. Well, that shows you the domination. We've talked about it throughout the entire game, but it was total domination on both sides of the football, running that uh, flex bone to perfection, and they took advantage of every opportunity they had with field position and turnovers to turn this game into the score that it was. Not much opportunity for Auburn to get in the game, uh, but they gave it their best shot, but they ran into a really a tough Tri-Valley Viking team today. Dry Valley runs the table, 41 to eight. The final, they finished 14 and 0. State champions in Class 2A. We've got plenty more for you here from DeKalb. Don't go away. We'll be back with more from Husky Stadium on Comcast Sportsnet.